we're going to talk about smells, the good, the bad, and the sexy. Hi, good morning, everybody. Can you all hear me? It's great to be here. Thank you, Steffi. Thank you, DLD, for a wonderful meeting. Let's start out with an experiment. I'm a scientist. Please cooperate. Everybody take their hand and give their forearm a smell. Here. Did everybody smell something? We all have smells. We all smell. <laughs> Actually, it's impossible not to smell because every time we breathe in, billions of billions of molecules pass across our nose, and there's an area at the top of our nose, a mucus layer. And in the mucus layer are millions of odor receptors, each waiting for a certain class of odor molecules to come. And when they catch one, chemical and electric signals are fired like a pinball machine straight into our so-called primitive limbic system, where they fire up the areas of emotion and memory. Smells are all about memories. There's no name for a smell. When we say, I smell a rose, it's because we've smelled roses before. Sometimes smells can conjure up distant memories of our past. Last night in Munich, the smell of the cold, the snow, reminded me of my youth in Ottawa 50 years ago and almost brought tears to my eyes. We all have these exper experiences. And of course, smells are all about emotion. They can make us hate, love, long for someone or something. In German, when you want to say that you can't stand somebody, you say, ich kann ihn nicht riechen. I cannot smell that individual. Well, we smell from the day we're born throughout our lives. It's amazing. Mothers can recognize the smell of their infants right after birth. And infants recognize and bond with the smells of their mothers on day one. And throughout our lives, we recognize each other's smells. In school, we can smell and recognize the smell of some of our classmates. As adults, most of us can smell and recognize the odor of our spouses, especially women. Women, by the way, smell better than men. They also smell better than men. <laughs> some scientists and some people think that because smell is a primitive sense, even bacteria, can swim towards and away from certain molecules. Animals all smell. It's called a primitive sense. And some people think that our odor system is going down the tubes of evolution, something like our appendix. I beg to differ. Yes, it's true that animals like dogs have much more exquisite sensitive sense of smell than humans do. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, we can still pick out odor molecules among billions of air molecules. I don't know whether we can see one pixel out of a billion, but in odors we can do that. And humans can sense up to 10,000 different odors. Wow. You might be asking yourselves how I became a professor of stink. And <laughs> I didn't plan it, but... Um, 30 years ago, I was a petroleum microbiologist studying how these tiny bacteria stick to petroleum droplets and are able to digest them. In the mid-1980s, we invented a two-phase mouthwash with oil and water. We found a way to coax bacteria from the mouth onto the surface of oil droplets, and we invented a two-phase mouthwash that became a big hit in the UK and other countries. Well, you know, mouthwashes, Mungeruch, bad breath. So before you know it, I was smelling people. I figure that up till now, in addition to a lot of research, I must have smelled between 10 and 20,000 mouths in one career. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I invented a deodorant. So I smelled hundreds and hundreds of armpits. And then a shoe spray. So I'm also quite an expert on smelling feet and shoes. <laughs> Once a 
fellow brought his wife into the clinic and he said she has a terrible odor coming from somewhere in her body. I don't know where, but if, I, if you can't find where the odor is coming from, I'm going to divorce her. So we had no choice but to smell the bits and pieces of her human anatomy. And indeed, you might not be surprised to learn that the smell was indeed coming from in between her toes. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> Having a bad smell is one of the worst things that a human being can have. Gentlemen in the audience, statistically, one quarter of us suffer from bad breath on a daily basis, and we don't even know it. There was a study in England, 72% of the women said they would not date a guy with bad breath. And body odor is even worse. Among all the disgusting characteristics a human being can have, Women in England ranked, that's a good word, they ranked body odor as number one turnoff, way ahead of bad breath, dirty fingernails, bad skin, and ugly clothing. Enough about bad smells. Let's go to good smells for a moment. Am I stuck? Ah, what smells better than a baby? I think that actually the wonderful smell of a baby is an evolutionary mechanism to, provide, to protect babies against harm by adults. And of course, those of us who raise children know that nothing smells as wonderful as a little child. They're our angels. We smell them. They smell us. It's wonderful. But one day, when our child is 10 or 12 or 14 years old, they come home from school stinking like a wet skunk, or a sock. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to puberty. Well, <laughs> what's happening during puberty? Our armpits develop these odors that we call body odors. You see that armpit? Those little hairs are each attached to a, an apocrine gland, which is a gland that develops during puberty in our armpits and farther down south in our body. And each of these glands secretes a fatty substance, a sebaceous substance that doesn't smell. But there are billions of bacteria in the armpit because we also secrete aqueous secretion from our eccrine gland. It's like God created a spice box of bacteria in our armpits. <laughs> and these bacteria are the ones that make the smells. No bacteria, no smells that we can notice in our armpit. Now, I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes trying to convince you that the armpit is actually, surprisingly enough, an extension of our sexual organs. Oy vey. Why do I say that? Well, not only do these glands develop and start smelling during sexual maturity, but they also wane during the decline in our sexual activity later on in life. Women, if you speak to them frankly, will admit that the smell of certain men actually arouses them, and they find the smell of certain men to be attractive. That's amazing. Men are also attracted to the smells of women. Well, there's one study where they gave women smells of human armpits of men at a level that they couldn't smell them, below the threshold. These odors still turned on mechanisms of their brain and reduced their blood pressures. Amazing. Men are also drawn to the odors, the natural odors of women. There's the famous story of Napoleon writing to Josephine, ne te lave pas, j'arrive. Honey, don't wash yourself, I'm on the way. And for centuries, women who wanted to attract the bow, I don't know if this will still work today, but you can try it, used to put a handkerchief or a piece of apple in their armpits, a kind of pomme d'amour, if you will, and uh, wave it or give it to their prospective bows. <laughs> women also communicate via their armpits and they control each other's menstrual cycle by signals from their armpits. Wow, this is pretty amazing. But if you consider how animals behave, it's not so surprising at all, is it? Animals smell each other all the time. They do so from further south in their body. And what they're looking for is not only to smell periods of heat or ovulation. They're all, they're all looking for a genetic match because our smells reflect our genetic being. 
You know, we all have our profiles on Facebook. We don't have our smell profile. But each of us has a smell of our own, our own individual smell that is a reflection of our genetic makeup. And there's even one study that humans behave like animals in this respect because animals look to mate with potential mates with a complementary smell that reflects genes that are good to mate with. There's one study that women prefer the smell of men I should say again, their armpits, based on genetic complementarity. Well, why is it in our armpits then? Well, the theory goes that when we were walking on fours, we smelled each other farther down south in our body, but homo erectus, if you will, the nose is a meter and a half up in the air, and to get a good smell, you have to move the odor up north. Have a look here at Al Pacino in the proximity of the human nose to the human armpit. Well, if I've convinced you that the smells from the armpit do have a sexual meaning, here comes the $64 billion question. Why are we so offended by them? Why are human smells, body odors, considered today the biggest turnoff? Well, the hint, of course, is today. Um, I'm going to give you three reasons why I think that our appreciation of odors has changed over history. First of all, Desmond Morris has said that fresh sweat is actually sexually appealing, but that the molecules oxidize within minutes, and if it's not fresh, it's not pleasant. Japanese think that our odors have gone down the tubes because of fast food and junk food that have a detrimental effect on how we live, our health, and how we smell. But I'm going to give you a third explanation. Smells, ladies and gentlemen, are all about context. If I gave you a banana and were primates that smell like a banana, you might like to eat it, right? If I gave you a steak, we're, we're omnivores, some of us eat steaks. If it smelled like a steak, you might be tempted to eat the steak. But if I brought you to a restaurant where the main course was a banana that smelled like a steak and a steak that smelled like a banana, I'm not sure you'd frequent that restaurant again. Same thing with smells. In primitive times, we lived in tribal societies before the Egyptians. Everybody knew who the alpha male was. Everybody had their own smells. There was a sexual hierarchy. We all walked around naked on a hot day. We had our smells out there. No deodorants, no showers. Everybody smelled funky. And looking around at the people in the audience, it's clear that our ancestors still made whoopee. Fast forward now to civilization. For the past 10 or 20,000 years, we are trying to modify and hide our smellness. We do this by perfumes since the time of the ancient Egyptians. But ladies and gentlemen, perfumes are made from roses and other flowers that are actually part of the sexual organs of plants. I challenge you to answer the question, why are we drawn to the odors of plants and flowers? Do we have something in common with insects that pollinate flowers? I think so. And if you don't agree with me, how about musk? We rub a little bit of musk all over our bodies. That's where the expression, hello deer, comes from. The musk is the sexy, funky odor of a little deer. What does that have to do with us? Well, I think that over the course of modern history, because of civilization, our smells have gone out of context and we've lost our true selves. And what happens now is you smell like Procter & Gamble, you bump into Unilever, do you Procter & Gamble, take you Unilever to be your happily wedded smellmate, but that's not your true smellmate. So I challenge all of you, for the next DLD, here's an app that's waiting to happen. Smells, this is the real way to find your mate, it's called the Smell Me, Smell You application. And what you do is you put it in your armpit, incubate it, and it gives you a readout of all the women in your proximity who are your genetic smellmates. Un un until, that, until that time, do not use antiperspirants with al aluminum salts that close down your pores and don't let you smell like yourself. Use just regular deodorants and seek out your smellmate. 
uh, until that application is available, one way to do this is to go down to the gym or the dance floor and get up close with somebody. Smell them. Let them smell you. Because to quote Al Pacino in The Scent of a Woman, there are no mistakes in the tango. Thank you very much.